uh, hello again. Uh, well, this is, I believe, uh, our uh, fourth uh, video that we're making, and today uh, we wanted to talk about walking. Uh, basically, uh, how do we get Max to go from point A to point B? And uh, we'll start off uh, by uh, letting him know uh, what we uh, expect him to do, and we'll take it from there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to go and we're going to tell Max um, exactly uh, what we want to, to do. So, uh, Max, hey, buddy. So I let him know that I'm here. I'm touching on his uh, shoulder, his hand. Hello, Max. Maxie, guess what? It's time to go walking. It's time to go walking, Max. Yes. You just told me you were bored. And so what we've decided to do is we're going to take a nice walk around the block. And then we're going to walk to the car and we are going to go to church for a few minutes and go shopping. Yay! The perfect day. So, um, so uh, usually what I like to do is let Max know. Uh, again, I kind of gave him a brief uh, agenda, you know, that we were going to go to church, uh, then we were going to go uh, shopping. Uh, but first, we're going to walk. We're going to walk uh, around the block. And um, uh, it's another good idea is to let him know how long that he's going to be expected to walk because really for Max, he doesn't know if you're talking about walking for uh, one hour uh, or one minute. Uh, and uh, I think a lot of times he will assume the worst. <laughs> so if he uh, thinks that it's going to be a long protracted walk with no uh, end in sight, uh, he might not be uh, as willing uh, to uh, cooperate uh, with us. So, so Maxie, let's get ready to walk. Okay, we're going to walk, Max, for about, and I can already sense he's not really excited about my agenda because he's got this blanket. He's kind of got the bear uh, hold on it. And so I'm going to have to kind of go under the blanket so I can sign to him. But that's kind of his way of saying he doesn't really want to hear what I have to say. But anyway, so Max, <laughs> see how he's blocking me. So Maxie, Maxie, listen, listen. And I kind of do the sign for listen. Maxie, hey, you're wrapped up like a burrito. I can't even get to you. Hey, Maxie, we're going to go walking for about 10 minutes. We're going to walk for about 10 minutes, okay? So let's take the blanket off. Blanket off. There we go. There we go. There we go. Bye-bye, blanket. Okay. So, Maxie, it's time to stand up, and we're going to go walk. So let's, let's stand up, okay? And at this point, I'm going to start to give him some gentle props. And again, not quite with my agenda at this point. You see how he's kind of pulling me towards him. He's like, Mom, I think I'd just rather sit here and snuggle. But we are going to walk. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if he'll come up easily. And what I mean by that is I'm going to kind of pull on his feet. Max, let's go walking. And he just might do it for us. There we go. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a somewhat willing participant. Good job, Maxie. Good job. Okay, so Max, let's walk over and we're going to get your um, hearing aid in and we'll get your shoes, okay? And uh, Maxie, first let's find your hearing aid. And I usually have it about the same place. Yeah, that's the oil we put on there. Oh, you got it. You got it. Good job. Good job, buddy. Okay, well, I'll put some oil on this, but it's nothing like mama lubrication. So we'll go ahead and slip this in. Perfect, Max. Perfect. Do you hear those birds sing? And we always put our little clipper on there. So now, Max, uh, Mama's going to put her FM on. Um, this uh, is a really nice device, this FM. This helps him to hear my voice a little bit better than the ambient noise of which we will be exposed to. Now, uh, unfortunately, Max has what they call a combined hearing loss, meaning he has both a sensorial and neural component. And what this means, Maxie, I'm going to talk for about two minutes, okay? So we'll do our waiting dance, okay? Oh, it's okay. We're going to walk real soon. 
But what this combined loss means is that uh, not only are the physical structures of the ear uh, affected, uh, for instance, the vestibular process, the uh, bones in the middle ear, but also uh, the nerve conduction is affected as well. So because of this, the hearing aid will help to amplify the noise, uh, but it's not going to totally fix uh, the problem, uh, meaning that uh, he will hear my voice better, uh, but it will still be garbled and difficult uh, to understand. So that is why I, I still talk slowly uh, and simply and give him uh, an opportunity uh, to respond. So, so now we'll go ahead and put our shoes on, Max. Now, Maxie, do you want your right shoe first or do you want your left shoe? So we got your right shoe or your left. You want your left? Okay. So again, any uh, chance we have to give him a choice, to give him an opportunity to control what's going on. Uh, and also, here you go, buddy. Uh, he gets to learn right and left, which for Max is going to be incredibly important as far as explaining uh, how uh, he is in relationship to his environment. Um, so now, Max, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to walk down the hill. And the sign for hill or mountain is you just sort of indicate that you're going up, you know, like uphill or downhill. So I've warned him. Uh, and Emily as well, <laughs> thanks Emily, don't break anything, that um, we're going to go downhill. So when we go downhill, um, I usually encourage Max to stand up very straight. And the reason, and again, he's using his cane. Do you see how he's using his cane to uh, feel the pitch of the hill? And actually, it just finished raining and the grass is a little slippery, so hopefully we won't fall. But if we do fall, as we stand straight, uh, we will tend to fall on our behinds versus on our face. So uh, that's why I like him to walk very straight uh, as we go uh, downhill. So what we're going to do now, and, and I'm warning him that we're going left. Um, and, and, you know, I almost do it at this point even without thinking of it. So uh, I will indicate when we need to turn right uh, or when we need to turn left. Um, and this way, you know, Max understands which way we're going. And, and we do this so much that, quite honestly, I don't even uh, realize that I'm signing anymore. It just feels, you know, so natural. Uh, but uh, at this point, we're going to walk to the car, and uh, I, I'm going to uh, let you guys uh, see how uh, Max uh, opens up uh, the car door and gets in and puts his seatbelt on. Uh, and then we're going to drive, and we're going to go <laughs> try to find some stairs. We're gonna need our key. Oh, and he's giving me the hearing. Thank you, Maxie. Look, mommy dropped it anyway, but Maxie, thank you for giving mama the hearing aid. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, you have to be careful with this guy because sometimes he'll take his hearing aid out and he'll throw it on the ground and you won't even know where it is. And that is truly a moment of fear because, uh, you know, these things are about $2,000 and it's, you know, plus all the good it does for him. I usually don't put my stuff up there, but just for the point of, oh, I should have cleaned out my car. Anyway, uh, the other thing Max does, sorry about that, is he takes his shoes uh, and he puts them into the car, which is fantastic because uh, historically he used to throw them outside the, the door. And of course, we don't want to lose any of his material. So at this point, um, I'm going to offer him the seat belt. Here you go, buddy. Let me put this cane over there. Maxie, you want to put your seat belt on? And I'm going to kind of give him a prompt, let him know what is going on. And uh, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but as you can see, he's feeling where the buckle goes and he's clicked. Good job, buddy. Good job. Uh, now, Maxie, if you could just close the door, close the door. And uh, I'm going to step back and I might give him a little prompt. This door is kind of out far because I was, there we go. Good. Well, pretty good job. I'm going to make sure that's shut. But uh, that is how we uh, get in uh, the car. For better or for worse, some of our other routines are is I like to uh, have him help me start the car. So I point out, you know, that this is the smooth key versus the rough key, and he's going to help guide my hand over here. 
There we go. He loves to open up the window. Oh, sorry. We listen to the music really soft. So he's already opened up the window. That's one of his favorite things to do is to stick his arm out as we drive. Uh, the other thing is you've noticed uh, he will take his hearing aid out before he gets into the car. And one of the reasons is if you've ever put one of those hearing aids in and got inside a car, it sounds like you're in the middle of like a jet engine. It's incredibly loud, incredibly uncomfortable, and so that's why he uh, tends to pull that out before he gets in the car. So again, beware. Always be looking for that hearing aid so that we don't lose it. Uh, but anyways, as I said, that's wonderful when he actually hands it to you, and that, that should be applauded. So, so right now he's waiting for me to go. Okay, Max, Mommy's being slow. So I'm going to go ahead and have him um, take the brake off. Uh, and put me in gear. And I tell him that it's two clicks back. Oh, that was three clicks, Mac. Just two. Good. And uh, I, I'm probably going to be sorry that I taught him that because I keep thinking one of these days he's going to slip in this car and just drive away. But I love the fact that he can participate and, again, feel somewhat in control of his destiny. Uh, oh, my gosh, I almost forgot to put my seatbelt on. Jeez. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and take this FM off as well. I don't want to lose that. That's another two. Th okay. So now what he's doing is he's reaching for the gear because he knows that that's right. One more click. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. And then I give him some uh, positive feedback. There we go. All righty then. So, uh, so anyway, so now he knows to go forward. The other thing is, is, um, uh, I kind of give him the choice as to whether to listen to music. So right now, while I'm not distracted, while it's safe to, to stop, I'm going to ask him, Maxie, do you want some music? And so he said music. So once he tells me that, then I'm going to let him. Brought to you by the American College oh, for that's Education a commercial. And the Foundation for Education and the Air Council. I couldn't get more Wait, opportunities without that one. Mess. at the church and uh, we're going to show you guys uh, how Max gets out of the car and how we go upstairs. So, but Max, we have to close the window. Now, he doesn't do this too willingly because he hates it. You're going to do it? Oh, good. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Max. That's very sweet. Thank you. Okay, I closed my window and now we can take, oh, sorry, <laughs> we're going to take the key out. There we go, buddy. There we go. And here we are. And so we're going to get out and uh, we're going to do some stairs. Uh, so anyways, um, one thing that I was talking about, and he hasn't done this in a long, long time, but there was a time when he used to uh, open uh, the car door um, and want to get out even though we were uh, still moving. So um, we have the uh, protective uh, lock on the back seats and on the front. I never think of it as a, uh, of a problem really because he has his seat belt on and if I notice him making that kind of move, I would just pull to the side, stop the car, and, you know, reinforce the importance of, you know, staying in a seatbelt. But, but if I am not in a hurry, he does better. Uh, he kind of senses sometimes when I get anxious and I, I'm, I'm in, a, in a hurry to get somewhere and he's not as cooperative. I guess he thinks, well, if you're worried, maybe I should be worried. I'm just going to stay put. But, uh, but anyways, as I said, we have all the time in the world anyway. So, again, uh, I warn him that we're going to go up the stairs. So, Maxie, can you find the stairs? Can you find the stairs? And as he feels the stairs, uh, go ahead and transition. I want him to, beautiful, can you find the rail? Can you, he's fixing his pants. There you go. Can you find the rail? There you go. Perfect. So, what we have here is he switched his can, cane to his left hand, and he's able to feel... There you go. Now he's switching back to his dominant hand. He's able to feel uh, how uh, deep the stairs are. Um, and again, because, okay, let's switch the cane over. Because his right hand is more dominant, I feel better about him using that uh, to stabilize himself on the rails. Now, oh, you're being, being a bit of a daredevil. Okay. Oh, so see, he didn't even know. Because he didn't have his cane down, he couldn't feel uh, that the stairs had stopped. So did you notice he took a false step? So, so anyway, so that's how we go uh, up the stairs. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to go uh, uh, down the stairs. And again, I'm going to warn Max. Maxie, we're going to go down the stairs. Can you find them? So I'm going to let him use his cane to find. And he trusts that he's close to a rail because that's usually where I have... And again, it's good for him to use his cane to appreciate 
Is there another step coming? How deep is this step? Am I going to be safe? So now he senses that the stairs, and we're going to go ahead and take another set. So I'm going to warn him. Maxie, we're going to go down the steps. And already he's switching. He's going to try to find that rail. There we go. And again, he's going to feel the pitch of the step. There we go, buddy. And I kind of, I'm swinging my arm around a little bit just to, and he's kind of doing this a little bit more independently as time goes on, but just to give him that sense that, good job, buddy, good job, uh, how to make sure uh, that he's able to touch uh, that next step. Uh, so here we are uh, at the, uh, the shopping uh, store, and um, actually, um, between the time we were talking and now, uh, Max has decided to come out of his seat and to get on the ground. Now, this is what I would call a bad behavior, and um, I really wanted to talk about behaviors uh, and not necessarily whether they're bad or good, uh, but the ideal that uh, whatever behavior Max is doing, um, it usually has meaning, and it's, uh, it's our job to try to understand uh, what that meaning is and to fix it uh, or to help him uh, if we can. Um, but uh, at this point, I suspect that the meaning is, is that he doesn't want to go shopping. And again, totally understand that. I don't know if it's a, a guy thing or, or, or what. Uh, but anyway, so uh, this gives us a chance to show you what I like to call uh, the, uh, the, the countdown technique. Um, this is what you do when you need Max to do something and he doesn't want to. So uh, first I'm going to give him an option of, of you know, to do this uh, by himself. And I'm going to tell him what I expect him to do. And at this point what I want him to do is I want him to sit up on this seat so that we can get his shoes on. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign to him. Maxie, Maxie, it's time to sit up. It's time to sit up so we can get your shoes on. Here you go. That's a good boy, good boy. That's it, go ahead and sit on up. Oh, I know you don't particularly want to go shopping, but, but you need to, sweetheart. Okay, so sit on up. So what I mean by the countdown is, he, is he's actually already started to comply, and I don't want to be a, a total meanie, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and show you what that looks like. So the countdown technique is um, I tell him what I need him to do. So Max, I need you to sit up on this seat, and then I start to count. Five, four, three, two, one. And I give him about 10 seconds to comply. And meanwhile, Max, I'm going to go ahead and prompt you to go ahead and do what you need to do. And the reason we give him 10 seconds is because we want him to uh, have an opportunity to participate in the right decision. And at this, and, and I'm going to go ahead and prompt. I probably shouldn't be rubbing him because that probably makes him just want to uh, sit there. But I don't know if you noticed, but do you see he's trying to kind of like hold on to his chair. So that shows me he's resisting a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and it's been 10 seconds. I'm going to give him a second count. Maxie, it's time to sit up in the chair. Five, four, three, two, one. And the reason I'm counting on his arm instead of in his hands because a lot of times he's not um, uh, working uh, with us or me. And so uh, I can't even get down there to put my hand under his because he's resisting. But I do know that he can feel the count and um, therefore we will proceed. So I give him another 10 seconds, which I'm sure it's been. And at that point, I basically um, uh, 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 help him um, to do what he needs to do and he no longer has a choice. So Maxie, mom is going to help you sit up, okay? Here we go. And this doesn't look really pretty. And again, I'm not sure if this is going to be ready for prime time, but his hands were kind of on, whoops, sorry, Max, there you go, good boy, good job, Max. His hands were kind of on uh, the bottom of the seat, and I had to take his fingers and loosen them up and have him sit up. So uh, now he's sitting up, and we can do what we need to do, and we'll go. Uh, but that is called the countdown technique, and basically it gives him about uh, 20 seconds. 
um, that he has an opportunity uh, to uh, participate uh, in his activity, uh, but if he doesn't, then he uh, needs to do it. Other times I think uh, behavior is uh, because Max gets uh, frustrated. Um, for instance, uh, I told him that we're walking uh, and you know he wants to walk. Uh, but then let's just say I meet a friend and uh, I stop to talk uh, with her. Uh, then sometimes Max gets frustrated. You know, we were supposed to walk and now you want me to stand. So um, one of the things I do to work with that kind of behavior is I tell Max, I'll say something like, Hey, Maxie, let's do our waiting dance. And so as we talk, uh, you know, to my friend, or let's just say we got into a really slow uh, 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 line at the grocery store, uh, then we can just sit here and sway for hours. And honestly, uh, I think this tends to relax both of us. Uh, so we call this the waiting dance, and we can do this indefinitely. Um, so that's a, a, a nice little trick to have. Um, Sometimes um, worse behavior is, again, if his expectation isn't being met or let's say he just doesn't want to do something that we need him to do, uh, he might scratch. Uh, and, you know, you know I, I hate to admit this, but uh, if he does scratch or try to scratch, uh, don't let him do that. I mean, you know, you should be able to get away. I mean, he is, you know, blind and deaf. So, uh, again, anticipate, you know, sometimes you can feel his hand kind of, you know, you can feel him sort of <laughs> selecting a spot there. Uh, if you feel like he's going to scratch, you know, just pull away, give him a moment, say, you know, nice hands, Max. Uh, and then again, uh, try to uh, find out why, you know, he was going to try to scratch you. Uh, like, for instance, uh, say, Max, if we need you to do your, uh, your brailing work, and let's just say if you don't want to do it, he might get angry at me and he might try to kind of slip his hand up there and, 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 and give me his opinion on it. Um, but what I will try to do is uh, I negotiate with him. I say, Max, you know, Max and Mom is just talking now, but let's just say, um, you know, why don't we braille for two more minutes uh, and then we'll go play in the water. You know, so uh, he knows that I'm listening to him, that I'm negotiating with him, but I still need for him to finish his brailing work. Um, and while we're on this topic, um, we have worked with uh, behaviorists uh, in the past, and uh, one of the uh, uh, challenges we've had with some of Max's behavior is, uh, again, sometimes he just doesn't want to do something. And uh, if that's the case, the uh, behaviorist pretty well told us he needs to complete the task, whatever it is, uh, if it's, you know, walking from point A to point B, or whether it's, you know, finishing his braille or, or what have you. And uh, an example I'm going to give you is there was a time, Max, and, and, and I don't know if, if you remember this, but when you were, um, when you were kind of a, 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 a young uh, boy, uh, probably about maybe five, six years ago, um, Max got to where you didn't want to walk uh, to the bus. Um, and this was really a huge issue. And, and how, yeah, you think that's funny. That's, that's not funny, Max, when we're trying to get you on the bus. And we, we got to get you on the bus or that bus is going to leave. And, you know, if you're not on it, we're going to have problems. So anyway, um, but what we figured out to do is, um, you know, what he figured out to do is uh, to be difficult, he would just uh, stop walking and he'd just sit on the floor, or worse, lay on the floor. Um, and so what uh, uh, we came up with an ideal was if it looked like he was going to do that, again, he'd slow down, he'd lean on the person. Uh, they ran and they got a little plastic chair and they put it down next to him. Uh, so it's like, okay, Max, if you need a rest, that's fine. You know, you can sit and rest uh, and then we'll walk to the bus. Uh, so uh, he would sit, uh, but then after probably about one minute, he would get so bored that he would want to get up and walk, you know? So, so that was an instance where, you know, we negotiated, we respected that perhaps uh, he needed a break. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, he still needed uh, to walk to that bus. 
Another reason that we might notice, uh, you know, some uh, interesting behavior with Max uh, is because uh, he just needs that proprioceptive feedback, that sense of touch. Um, for instance, uh, when he lays down, you might notice him uh, laying flat on his back with his legs crossed. And I'm going to show you an example of that when we get home. But uh, it helps him to feel grounded where he uh, knows where his body is. Um, it's, it's something we all take for uh, granted. But if you're uh, blind, you, you don't get any kind of auditory feedback. And also with Max, he has issues with his vestibular system. Uh, he has no idea where his body is. And probably the most important thing that we need to feel safe, uh, uh, to feel safe is to uh, know where our body is. You know, is our body safe? Uh, so um, one of the other behaviors uh, we've noticed is he might take his hands, and he's kind of doing a little bit of it here where he'll take his fingers and he'll kind of crunch them together. And I never really noticed uh, uh, the importance of that, but we went to a conference on movement disorders and they said that a lot of times uh, kids that are deaf, blind, um, that have issues with um, knowing where their body is, will do this just simply to know where their hands are. And um, if you ever want to just uh, close your eyes uh, and if your hands are out in space, you know, it's kind of unsettling. Uh, uh, but if you crunch them together, you can know exactly where your hands are. Another behavior is he will grind his teeth. Uh, and uh, you see this a lot with uh, special needs kids. Uh, but that gives them incredible, incredible uh, proprioceptive feedback. Um, hand flapping is another. Um, it kind of looks like this when he's <laughs> Max. Mommy's doing silly, silly gestures, but but again, that gives him that uh, that sense of of um, proprioceptive feedback, that touch, uh, that now he knows where his arms are, where his hands are, and he feels uh, he feels safe, he feels uh, secure, protected. Uh, this is one of Maxie's favorite positions when he is just chillaxing, and he is uh, laying down. He's playing with his fan. But you'll notice that his uh, legs are crossed, and he has them uh, up against the couch. And uh, he's flat on his back. A lot of times his arms will be uh, up and waving. Okay. Uh, and uh, another uh, reason uh, why Max does some of his behaviors, or at least why we think he does, uh, he's simply bored, um, and he's doing what we call self-stem. So uh, what this looks like, um, one of the common ones that kids do, especially when they're blind, is they do what we call eye poking. And Max usually uses his left index finger and he'll poke his left eye. Even though he doesn't have vision, there is still some life to that optic nerve. And so when he pushes in on his eyeball, it kind of gives him a light show. Um, and again, it, 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 it seems kind of an odd behavior. It's hard to imagine that something like that would be entertaining. but. Uh, um, I think when you work with a lot of these uh, children, you'll find out how, uh, how natural and common that is. Uh, another uh, uh, thing that we'll notice Max doing is sometimes he'll take his thumb and he'll, uh, sorry, over. <laughs> he'll take his uh, thumb and he'll dig it into his vocal cords, uh, really almost right over where his trach used to be. And, uh, and, la, 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 la. And, and and I think that gives him the vibration, again, the stimulation uh, that uh, he is seeking uh, when he is, you know, relatively bored. Uh, some other behaviors, he just started this last couple months, and I, I, I don't know if this is from boredom, but it seems like he does it when he's bored, is uh, he, will, uh, he will start to pick at his eyebrows or his eyelashes. Um, and, uh, you know, he doesn't do it to the point of where he pulls hair out. Uh, but to me, uh, when I see this behavior, it typically is he's just laying around. He's not under stress. There's no other reason other than perhaps he's bored. Um, and uh, so those are a couple of the things that, you know, you might see when you uh, work with Max. Uh, and uh, another thing that uh, Max will tend to do uh, when he's bored, unfortunately, seems to especially happen when we're in church, um, is... Uh, 
if it's a time for, let's say, to pray or a time uh, for the priest to tell us our stories that Max isn't necessarily um, uh, interested in, uh, then he will vocalize. And um, he's listening to me, so I can't, you know, he's probably relatively entertained, but uh, it's more like, you know, la, 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 ha, 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 that sort of thing. And uh, so that's another thing that he tends to uh, do when he's bored. And unfortunately, when the music starts and I want him to sing and I say, yeah, Max, la, 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 uh, he stops. It's crickets because now he wants to listen to the music or feel the vibrations. Uh, sometimes when you see behavior on his part that can be difficult to deal with, it's because he's simply tired. Uh, and uh, one of the more common examples is uh, when we're out uh, walking and sometimes he'll start to slow down. Uh, he'll start to lean up against me. Uh, he might just stop completely. Uh, worst case scenario, he'll, he'll sit down wherever we are. Super worse, I guess, than that is he'll lay down. So um, just a few things. One is um, you can usually anticipate when these episodes are going to happen. Always be aware of where uh, seats are, uh, our couches or chairs. Um, I know where all the benches are uh, in the parks we go to, and the ideal would be if he starts to show some of these signs of fatigue, you know, you can say, hey, Max, you know, we'll just, we're going to walk for just one more minute, you know, and then we'll sit down so he knows that there's a break coming. Um, I remember one event in particular when we were at this theme park, uh, Kentucky Kingdom, and uh, it was uh, at least 100 degrees outside. It was very hot. Uh, we had been walking all day. We had been waiting for probably about 20 minutes, uh, but we were finally getting close to getting on this ride. And, you know, I knew he was about to give up the, 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 uh, the effort, uh, but, you know, I said, Max, I said, we're almost there. Come on, buddy. He just wouldn't have anything to do with it. He, he fell down to the ground. The concrete was hot. Um, people were all around, you know, what's wrong? Can I help you? He's sweaty. I'm sweaty. You know, I couldn't even get a good purchase of him. But what I ended up doing is um, slipping my hands underneath his um, armpits and then coming up around his chest and hauling him up and uh, dragging him over uh, to a soft, grassy knoll. And uh, there was shade there. We relaxed for about five, ten minutes, and then he was ready to go. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is always have an exit strategy ready, um, and this will help you out uh, in your um, uh, working with Max. Uh, and lastly, I think sometimes his behaviors uh, help to uh, uh, release uh, stress that uh, perhaps when he's a little bit nervous, he might do certain behaviors. Uh, for example, one of the ones Max used to do, uh, gosh, I think this happened maybe about uh, six months ago, uh, is he started licking his hands. I mean, just out of nowhere, but it did tend to happen when he was stressed, like if I expected him to do something or, you know, maybe he was a little anxious about, you know, going to uh, the doctor's office, uh, he would just lick, lick, lick. And uh, it was very systematic and it was very, you know, specific. Uh, and so, you know, that's fine. Again, it wasn't hurting him. It wasn't hurting me. Um, but the interesting thing is as time went by, uh, I think he figured out that if he licked his hands, people wouldn't uh, be as willing to work with him, let's say, uh, on doing his Braille work. Uh, and so uh, I had uh, one of the teachers tell me that, you know, yuck, you know, he's licking his hands. And, uh, and I think at that point, Max learns that there is maybe a secondary gain uh, to this type of behavior. So I think whereas initially it started uh, to reduce stress, uh, it actually changed into something that, you know, could be helpful for him to reach some of his personal goals. Uh, so anyway, as I said, uh, behaviors, you know, are, are fascinating. Um, I think they're uh, great to be able to watch for, uh, to understand, uh, try to figure out the meaning, put them in context. So again, I think if we can understand uh, what and why Max is doing something, we can uh, help to make his uh, world into a better place.